This video will cover the topic, matching parent graphs with their equations. Memorizing parent graphs can be an intimidating and challenging task. One way to help with the memorization process is identifying the key characteristics of each function. The first pair of functions we would be looking at are f of x equals 1 and f of x equals x. Recall that the standard form we use when writing the equations for a line is f of x equals mx plus b. What do the m and b stand for? That's a great question. We use m to refer to the slope of the line, and we use b to refer to the y-intercept of the line. Or in other words, the point where the line intersects the y-axis. Looking at f of x equals 1 first, the first thing we can notice is that the line is perfectly horizontal, meaning it has a slope of 0. It is for this very reason that there is nothing written in for mx. Another way to write this equation could be f of x equals 0x plus b. We can also tell that the line intersects the y-axis at the point 0, 1, which means we can substitute 1 in for b. The result is f of x equals 0x plus 1. Anything times 0 equals 0, so the final result is f of x equals 1. The key things to look for when looking at f of x equals 1 is a horizontal line, or in other words, a line with a slope of 0, and a y-intercept at the point 0, 1. Now let's take a look at f of x equals x. I noticed this time the line does intersect the y-axis, but we wrote nothing in for b this time. Why is that? That's a great observation. The reason you see no y-intercept is because f of x equals x intersects the y-axis at the origin, with the coordinates 0, 0. We can also know that the slope for f of x equals x is 1. So 1 is our m value. With this information, we can substitute in 1 for m and 0 for b. The result is f of x equals 1x plus 0. 1 times x equals x plus 0 is still x. So our final result is f of x equals x. The key characteristics to look for when given f of x equals x is first of all a slope of 1, and second of all a y-intercept at the origin 0, 0. Now let's take a look at our next pair of functions. Here we are looking at f of x equals the absolute value of x and f of x equals the square root of x. Let's look at f of x equals the absolute value of x first. The first thing we can notice about the absolute value of x is that it has a very distinctive v-shape. This is because the absolute values of all non-zero numbers are positive and the absolute value of zero is zero. For example, when substituting negative one in for x, the output or y value is a positive one. The resulting coordinate would be negative one, one. With this example in mind, we can conclude that all outputs or y values are going to be greater than zero. The key characteristic to note and memorize when looking at the absolute value of x is a v-shape, where all y values are greater than or equal to zero. Next, let's take a look at f of x equals the square root of x. On this one, I notice that all the x values are greater than or equal to zero. Yes, that's right. Recall that we cannot take the square root of a negative number. For this reason, we can only evaluate the function for positive x values. This results in a domain of x is greater than or equal to 0. So the main thing we look for in the function f of x equals the square root of x is the domain of x is greater than or equal to 0. The next pair of functions we have here are f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x cubed. Looking at x squared first, we see a very distinctive u-shape. We call this u-shape a parabola. This is the distinguishing factor of x squared. The second thing we can take note of is that the y values are all positive. This is because any value squared will become positive. For instance, if we substitute negative 1 in for x, the result is negative 1 squared equals 1. And the resulting coordinate would be negative 1, 1. 
For this reason, we can always recognize x squared as an upward facing parabola with a range y is greater than or equal to zero. Now let's move on to x cubed. x cubed is identical to x squared when x is positive, but differs when x is negative. This occurs because a negative value cubed is still negative. As an example, if we evaluate the problem for x equals negative one, the result would be negative one cubed equals negative one. And the resulting coordinate would be negative one, negative one. The key characteristic to notice when looking at x cubed is that x cubed is identical to x squared when x is positive, but whenever x is negative, y is also negative. These are the last two functions we will be looking at. The first function here is f of x equals one over x. Here I see the function runs along the y-axis and the x-axis, but it doesn't touch either of them. Yes, in this function we call the x-axis and the y-axis asymptotes. Asymptotes occur when the values of the graph become closer and closer to a line, but never actually touch. In this case, we call the y-axis a vertical asymptote, because it is a vertical line, and the x-axis a horizontal asymptote, because it is a horizontal line. Now let's take a look at 1 over x squared. In this graph, we can see once again that the two portions come closer and closer to the y-axis and the x-axis, but never actually touch. So just like 1 over x, there is one vertical asymptote that occurs at the y-axis, and one horizontal asymptote that occurs at the x-axis. The x values approach zero, but never actually reach it, and in the same way, the y values approach zero, but never actually reach. Additionally, we can note that the y values are all positive because x is squared. Using x equals negative one as an example again, we can substitute negative one in for x. The result is one over negative one squared equals one over one, and one over one equals one. And the resulting coordinate would be negative one, one. So the key characteristic of both one over x and one over x squared is a vertical asymptote at y equals zero and a horizontal asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, so in order to match each parent graph with its equation, I have to study and memorize each one. But remembering the key features of each graph definitely makes the process much more manageable. That's right. Good luck.